So we, we wanted to leave the Taoiseach and his government colleagues, including the Minister for Housing, under no doubt whatsoever about our seriousness on this issue. And therefore, today we're tabling a piece of legislation that would be, if passed by this House, legally binding uh, on uh, the uh, Oireachtas to extend that ban. As Minister O'Brien will know, it is almost word for word a replica of his own legislation from last October, simply with the dates of the bill changed. We did that to ensure its speedy passage through the bill's office to get it on the order paper. Uh, and as the Minister also knows, my view is there needs to be a single amendment to the bill to ensure where a homeowner who the, are themselves homelessness, homeless or at risk of homelessness uh, should be able to access uh, their property. The reason why we tabled the bill today is because we wanted to give every member of Dáil Éireann a very simple opportunity to state clearly and categorically through a vote on legislation as to whether they were in favour of extending this crucial protection for renters or whether they were going to vote to increase uh, homelessness. Uh, and in fact, I would have thought the government would have welcomed that vote. Uh, Leo Varadkar has been particularly brash, if not at certain points callous, in his defence of the government's position in uh, recent weeks. Uh, and I thought he would relish the opportunity uh, uh, to stand up and be counted and have all of the deputies supporting his government independence included do likewise. But now it appears that the government doesn't actually want to vote on this bill uh, at all. Uh, at the 11th hour, government tabled a reasoned amendment. Uh, I don't think there has been, in my time in the Oireachtas, an amendment of this nature to a private member's bill. Uh, uh, and the purpose of that is to avoid the vote on the legislation yeah, yeah. itself. So I, I have to ask the Minister, what are you afraid of? Why won't you allow all of the deputies in this House have a vote on the legislation yeah, yeah. Uh, we're bringing before you? And I think the answer is very clear. You are clearly running scared uh, of giving TDs that vote. You were scared that, in fact, if there was a vote on the legislation itself, your majority might start to whittle away uh, 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 from uh, the six independent deputies you cobbled together last week into something fewer in number uh, and tighter uh, than would be comfortable. And therefore, we're faced uh, with the bizarre situation where, albeit it is completely in, order, in, in line with standing orders, and I'm not questioning that, we're actually having an amendment tabled, which is an exact replica of the wording of your counter motion uh, from last week. Uh, and what I have to say is I am urging all TDs in this House to reject this uh, uh, stunt, because that is nothing more than what it is. And in fact, if there are TDs in this House who are against the extending of the ban, they should have the courage of their convictions, they should reject the government's amendment, and they should vote against our bill if that is how they wish. Uh, because at this late stage, given, as you'll hear from my colleagues I I over the next uh, period of time, the growing level of concern and, in some cases, outright fear of tenants facing uh, losing their homes in the coming weeks and months, this bill is becoming increasingly important. Uh, we are all dealing with cases. In my own constituency, I have one particularly difficult case of a woman in her 70s. Her notice to quit is due on Saturday. She has no family or friends to stay with, and she should not have to face the prospect of either overholding or presenting and being accepted if a place is available in a shared accommodation low threshold hostel in Dublin city centre, because that is all that is left at this point in time. Nobody should be in emergency accommodation, but particularly not a woman in her 70s who has worked her entire life, whose children have done well and are now living uh, uh, abroad, and she is left here to face the consequences of Minister O'Brien's housing policy. So, the argument is the same as it was last week. The government has not put in place the mitigation measures, has not put in place a contingency plan to stop the incessant rise of homelessness over the next number of weeks and months, and therefore the emergency ban on no-fault evictions must be extended, not because it's a solution in and of itself, but because it would give government the breathing space it needs to ensure that homelessness does not continue to rise but starts to fall. And on that basis, I commend the bill to the House. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, are of all the terrible housing decisions that this government and previous governments have made over the last decade, I truly believe that this one's going to be judged the harshest. Because you agree, you admit that thousands of people who are now served with notices to quit, who are absolutely terrified 
over the next period of time if they will end up homeless. We know, and you even admit, that we are going to see an increase in homelessness. Yet at the exact same time, you also know and you also admit that there is very little emergency accommodation across this state. And I can just see it from Galway City Council and I can see it in Galway County Council. And I see it with the people coming in through my door every single day. That they don't know where they're going, they have no confidence that this government has any idea where they will go. And you have to, can't make any mistake about this, Ara. You know that people's lives will be thrown into absolute and utter turmoil because of this decision that you and your colleagues in government have created. That means the carefree innocence of childhood is totally shattered because families are worried, parents are worried, and that obviously goes on to the, ch child, to the children as well. One of the things that you tell us time and time again is, oh, well, we're expanding the tenant in situ scheme. Well, Ara, one question that I would have for you, and one thing that I think that you need to make very clear to councils, is that in those areas like Galway City and Galway County, whereby people who are on half are in the, in the county council, it is not clear if the houses that are, if, if their landlord is willing to sell, if the councils can, can, should buy them and whether they should be counted. You're nodding your head, but I tell you, see the councils, they don't know the answer to that. So see if that's something that you feel strongly about. Well, then make sure you get out there and you put a very clear briefing to all the councils. Because that is one of the issues um, that is continuously being raised. You aren't listening to us in opposition. You're not listening to housing campaigners. Well, you should listen to those people who are absolutely petrified because of the decision that you've made. There was a lot of heat and uh, light and some nonsense generated from some TDs over the past two weeks in relation to this issue. I've heard some TDs saying that some tenants will require four years' notice, that the state were going to come in and uh, CPO all of these houses. But whether they were concerned with voting to extend the ban or to retain it, there were some strange attempts to divorce themselves from the consequence of their own actions and attacked Sinn Féin then to distract from these consequences. But 120 eviction notices will fall due in County Kerry unless our measure is passed. So there's little room for prevarication now when the stakes are so high for so many. Speaking to housing officers in Kerry County Council, I hear that the system is already under immense strain. They're under severe pressure, and it's like organised chaos. In my office, my team has heard a number of concerning stories already in Kerry with the ban set to expire. We had contact from one mother of four children who was told that she had to leave by her landlord. She had no options and is terrified that she will end up homeless. Once that happens, it's difficult to see a path back to stable housing for her, so long as current government policies continue. A woman in her 80s was in touch with our office. She was given notice a while back now, but with the increased competition for housing and rent prices, she has nowhere to go. These stories are going to keep on coming over the next few weeks and months. There hasn't been a single affordable house built in County Kerry in the last few years, and there was 56 adults accessing homeless accommodation in January of this year. The scheme that was introduced last year, uh, nothing, no, no communication was made to Kerry County Council. When they complained about it, the Taoiseach said it was a cop-out by Kerry County Council. But without the guidance or management from central government, nothing was done. No, uh, none of the rented accommodation was purchased. The, and the length of time for conveyances did not seem to be taken into account at all. These figures might seem relatively small, but for a rural and isolated county with little resources, the 120 eviction notices representing it probably at least three times the current number of people homeless, it represents a huge challenge. When those on HAP or direct provision but eligible to leave are included, the figures are even higher. The reality is, in a market where upward pressure is so high, that the single mothers, the elderly, migrants, disabled and those least able to absorb rent increases will miss out. It will see them filling up emergency accommodation unless the measure passes. There is no getting away from it. And I repeat my call for all Kerry TDs to support this legislation. Uh, Ara, I'm not going to quote myself. I'm going to quote some of the letters that I've got without using the name because I don't have the permission of the people to identify them but they are well known to the City Council and to Homeless Services in many cases, um, and probably to other deputies in this House. One woman says, 
I have been renting my current home for 10 years and have been served a notice to quit by my landlord who intends to sell his property in April. I am currently out of work due to severe illness and I am terrified of the precocious position I face. My days are filled with medical appointments including nephrologists, renal nurse, renal dietitian and, and more. Merely staying alive has been battled over the last few years. After years of battling, I am now facing homelessness. The additional stress and uncertainty this brings further impacts on my kidney disease. When I leave my rental property, there are no affordable alternatives within the HSE catchment area. This means I lose access to my support services, which have kept me alive thus far. Another woman, I am currently on the housing list 11 years. I am renting through the HAP at the moment, and the landlord is moving into her home in May. We have been given notice to quit by the landlord. The original date was the 17th of March, but that has been extended until May the 1st, uh, as of the current eviction ban. I have two kids, aged 10 and 8. I am sick of having to up and move them every two years and then have to start all over again and try and make new friends and have a social life. Another woman, I am. I have now been on the housing waiting list with DCC for 12 years. I am a mother of one 12-year-old son and living in Crumlin uh, in private rented accommodation in, re in receipt of rent allowance supplement. My landlord has plans to sell the current property I am in, giving me notice that I am in the following months uh, to find alternative accommodation. COVID eviction ban meant I was able to stay on in this property when the landlord originally wanted to sell. Uh, now I am faced with ev eviction. I am um, just going to finish on this one. Uh, I am getting terrible trouble from my landlord. He has solicitors and estate agents on this to get me out of the house. can't take much more of this harassment. Uh, I have two children, an eight-year-old son and a four-year-old daughter. Thank you, Dr Denise Mitchell. Minister, I am appalled by this government's decision to lift the eviction ban when you have so many people facing notices to quit. The ban on evictions was given was to give your government time to put measures in place, but instead you and your government squandered that time. Looking at the RTB data for quarter three of last year, there is 1,000 839 notice to quit letters in Dublin alone. Now Sinn Féin have been asking you and your government a question that you can't seem to answer. So I'm going to ask you again today, Minister, where are these people going to go? Now I have any amount of cases that I could raise with you this evening, but I want to raise two. I too have a woman in her 70s who's staring eviction in the face and she's nowhere left to turn. She was told that she has to wait until her notice to quit date falls and then she has to declare herself homeless. Can you imagine the mental trauma of becoming homeless in your 70s? Can you imagine the stress that that would cause you? Can you imagine the anxiety, Minister, of being in your 70s and not know where you're going to go? It's an absolute disgrace. I've also another case of a young woman with three children who's been made homeless in the middle of April. This woman is absolutely devastated. She's heartbroken at the thought of having to tell her children the reality. Where is she and her three children going to go, Minister? Please tell me, because this woman has told me she is on the verge of a breakdown and she can't take any more. Now, you and the previous ministers for housing has failed dramatically. This bill aims to prevent no-fault eviction and it also is to give you time and your government time to put measures in place yet again. Now, Minister, I appeal to you, but I also appeal to the absent independent TDs to stand up and support this bill. Thanks, uh, Last Corla. I want to commend uh, my Sinn Féin colleagues for the work on bringing this bill forward. Minister, the legacy of this government will be failure on housing. It will uh, be of how Fianna Fáil 
the Greens and Fine Gael repeatedly failed to stand on the side of those most in need, and how this government failed to provide for the most basic of needs for ordinary people and the more vulnerable members of society, a safe home for them and their families. The figures released recently from the RTB showed that many of these, uh, those issued with notices to quit are families with children, couples, couples and pensioners. Some of these people will find themselves in need of emergency accommodation, which of course there is none. There is uh, none for all those people who are already out on the streets sleeping rough. Uh, people will have to couch surf. Relationships will break down. It's inevitable. Others will be forced into emigration or find themselves sleeping in cars. As the private rental market continues to fail to provide sufficient and affordable housing, the government's decision to end the eviction ban will see more and more people forced into homelessness and hardship. I was contacted by a, a, a tenant today uh, with an eviction notice and she said, I'm scared and I'm scared for my children. Uh, this government has lost control of the homeless crisis at levels of home as levels of homelessness continues to rise. And by the ending of the winter ban on evictions, we will see this number grow higher and higher over the coming months. The damage being inflicted on ordinary people by this government uh, is a heartless and it will be felt for generations to come. I see its impact right across my constituency. In, uh, in communities like Rings End, I see young couples who want to settle down into a community and to start a family, but they can't. Uh, the, the, they find it impossible to find affordable housing. We have the glass bottle site. The housing there isn't going to be affordable. It's having a devastating impact on communities right across uh, the city uh, and country. And I support this motion. Go ahead, um, Minister, we're back here again after a week where people have been aghast at what your government has done in removing the eviction ban. For people across the country, it has been a terrible calamity, and, and it's not just in urban areas, while it's much worse, of course, in the, in, the, in the vast urban areas of Dublin and other cities, but in rural areas, well, in my own constituency, we see the impact of the removal of this eviction ban. And if you want to see what it's like, there's a video going around of an eviction in Bundorn in the last couple of weeks, where a family of eight were thrown out of their house. You know, and that's what it's going to be like for very, very many families around the country if this situation is not resolved. There are landlords out there who will do that, who will, tr who will go around and gather the belongings of small children and put them in black plastic bags and throw them outside the door like what was done in Bundorn a week or two ago. And the only protection those people had was your eviction ban. And now you take that away in a time when you've put nothing to, to replace it. And that's the difficulty that we have here. The piece of legislation we're putting forward is a carbon copy of what you put forward last October, and yet you say it won't work. It didn't work last October because you've done nothing between now and then. And that's the difficulty that we've got. You continue to pursue this line that you want to drive forward with this, if only, if only for the sake of the people out there who are in this situation, you had the same determination to provide housing. That's what we want to see. But we don't see that. All we see is more and more empty promises. So, Minister, the reality for many, many people around this country is what, we have hap is what happened in Bundoor and what will happen across vast areas of the country. Many of my colleagues have set out instances of people in their constituencies who have these difficulties. I too have similar situations where we have people, I spoke to a woman the other day, her husband has MS, or she has a small child with a medical condition as well, she has a notice for eviction, she doesn't know where she's going to go, she's trying to get a local authority house, hoping beyond hope that something will come up. And, and that's the problem that we've got. She may have to move to another end of the county in order for to be able to get that in place. So it's a huge upheaval for people. You also say, you know, that so many people will not have to end up in emergency accommodation. If they don't end up in emergency accommodation, they're advised for to go and live with other family members or to, to couch surf with friends or to find somewhere else that isn't there. That's the reality of it. I spoke to somebody in the housing section of a local authority recently, and they said to me, the only hope we have, she said, is G if Jesus comes back and is able to do the miracle of the loaves and fishes, because that's what we need to do with houses, because we simply don't have them. They don't exist. A minister, what you do is you'll stand up here and you'll tell us everything that you've done and everything that you've provided, <coughs> and that we've hold more houses now and more houses on stream and more planning permissions through, and all this nonsense. But that's no good to the ordinary people out there who haven't got a place to live and you still don't have an answer. Where are they going to go when they get that notice to be evicted? Gormagoth. Gormagoth, Cancorla. Minister, I listened to you acutely, and you know nobody would think that Fianna Fáil and Fine Gael have been 
in power for the last 100 years. I'd remind you that Fine Gael have never, or, or that Sinn Féin have never been in, uh, in government in the south of, of this island. So to start blaming Sinn Féin, that it's Sinn Féin's fault uh, where, where you're going with housing or where you're not going with housing is absolutely ridiculous. And most people recognise the ridiculousness of that. The only way I can make sense of this decision is to believe that the government and all of the government TDs don't understand the damage and the harm they're about to do. Certainly, they don't realise the strength and the de depth of feeling on this issue. In my own county of Mayo, the place of birth and of Michael Davitt, the word eviction causes deep and visceral reaction. People will remember this for a very long time, Minister. Even your own people, I speak to your own activists on the ground, people who've supported Fianna Fáil for years, they don't expect anything different from Fianna Gael. But they do expect different from yourselves. Your members, particularly your older members, who are, were around when homes were built in the poorest of times in the 60s and the 70s, cannot believe how you've abandoned them. I spoke to some, one such man yesterday in his 70s. He's a retired civil servant. He worked all his life, as he said himself, paid all his taxes, and this is how you treat him. His landlord won't renew his lease, and he's left in this precarious situation in his 70s. He can't be considered for a mortgage or can't be considered for anything else. And he tells me he's feeling trapped and full of fear because of what your government is, is doing to, to him. I've been dealing with another woman in, in, who works in Westport. She was issued with a notice to quit on New Year's Eve after living in the same home for 10 years. Since then, she's been desperately looking for somewhere to live for her and her daughter. She needs to be in Westport for work so that her, her, she can go to work and that her daughter can go to the childminder. In, in her own words, I have viewed many properties but haven't been successful. I'm at my wit's end and my tether now. I don't know what else I can do. As it stands, at the end of the month, we could be homeless. The prospect really scares me. While we were in the middle of a pandemic and most people were at home safe from the virus, I was out working every day, risking bringing COVID back to my daughter. I was on to Westport County Council, and the only thing they can do is give me a voucher for B&B. So you see, Minister, when you stand up here and you say, we have this, we have that in place, and we have the other, what you get is a voucher for a B&B that you can't even stay in during the day. And, and I too listen to you, Minister. You've spent 10 minutes uh, doing what you're accusing us of doing. You've said we're playing politics, and I've listened to the debate. We have put on the Dáil record the reality for people with eviction notices and what they are facing. They are not a cohort of people that you have spoken to or about in relation to your own contribution. In fact, you spent most of your contribution criticising my party, which is playing politics, uh, precisely what we have not done. We have brought the voices of people who are facing eviction, many of them families, many of them with children, here to the Dáil, and that is the right thing to do. And we have also laid out the facts, and the facts cannot be disputed. Rents are up, house prices are up, homelessness is up, and you are not meeting your targets. You're talking about five or 6,000 social homes. I mean, it doesn't even... It, that's a drop in the ocean in relation to what is required. My own county of Roscommon had the second largest increase in rents last year, unheard of. Over a €1,000 now a month average rents in county Roscommon. The, the situation in Galway is, is absolutely dire. There are no properties to rent in most of the main towns. Ballinasloe, a prime example, not one single rental property available in Ballinasloe. A waiting list for emergency accommodation. And again, in your 10 minutes, you didn't answer the question, where are these people going to go? If I'm living in Ballinasloe and I have an eviction notice, I can't get emergency accommodation. There's a waiting list. There is nowhere to rent. Where do I go? You, you haven't answered that question, and that is the problem. Local authority stock isn't there, there's nowhere to rent, and there is nowhere to go. I met a lone parent in my office this morning. She's living in her mother's sitting room with her three-year-old son. Many more will join her on Saturday and from Saturday onwards, living in overcrowded accommodation, putting huge pressure and stress on families and literally robbing children of their childhoods. And that's another thing that you haven't spoken about either. These are children whose lives are being absolutely destroyed by this government. And you're sitting there going ahead despite knowing exactly what this is going to do to people right across the state. It is a great shame and it is going to lead to heartbreak and misery for families right across the state.
Deputy Ryan. I would like to thank uh, my colleague Deputy Owner Bryn for bringing this bill to the all. Minister, you must realise now that at least the fourth motion or bill in the last month that has spoken to the eviction ban and to extending it. Are you not listening? Four times in space of one month, the opposition has pleaded with government to extend the eviction ban, and four times you have failed to do it. Four times, Minister. It's absolutely ridiculous. If not us, then please listen to your conscience and extend the eviction ban until January 24. When the eviction ban lapses on March 31st, there will be a steady flow of families in South Kildare who will be made homeless through no fault of their own. There are people just trying to get by and live their lives as best they can. As government TDs know, emergency homelessness accommodation are beyond breaking point all over the country already. Where are the families to go? At some point, Minister, you may have to answer that question because everybody that has asked you for the last month has got no answer and you decline to answer at every opportunity that you are asked. Many will have no choice but to return to their uh, parents' houses, couch surf, become rough sleepers. Imagine telling an old age pensioner to have to become a rough sleeper. They're the backbone of our country and you're an absolute disgrace. I would urge you and your colleagues to support our bill and use emergency planning and procurement powers to target vacant properties that are dotted all over Kildare. Everywhere I go there are dereliction. Not only that, but heed Sinn Féin's call to start the biggest social and affordable housing programme in the history of the state so that folks can access affordable housing to buy or rent. And I urge the government and its backbenchers, Minister, to take the last chance to do the right thing and to do the right thing for people who voted for you and to keep families in your homes. And I might add, maybe the Deputy of uh, Independent Deputy in South Kildare, Deputy Berry and Deputy Hayden, might like to do the right thing as well because people voted them in to do the right thing to have their chance now. Brown? and Ara. Sinn Féin could not in all conscience uh, allow you to end the eviction ban without doing what we can in the interest of renters across County Tipperary and indeed across the whole country uh, to change our minds. And we can change your minds and that of your backbenchers. Then we look at the independents uh, who propped you up last week. And I use the word independent very loosely here because if you scratch just below the surface, their true colours actually start coming out. And if they stand by the actions of last week, uh, they'll be increasing the risk of homelessness. It's 117 in County Tipper area alone, and <clears throat> they're due to fall at the end of this weekend. One estate I'm aware of has already, the receiver has moved in to start clearing it out, and they intend to issue notices to quit as soon as they can. There's another block of apartments that has seen residents already get notices to quit. Then there's individuals uh, and families who my own party colleagues, Davy Dunn, Councillor Davy Dunn, Councillor Tony Black, have been contacted by. And that situation is so bad in Tipperary, them with another three independent councillors have actually called an emergency meeting of Tipperary County Council tomorrow to actually try and put something together uh, to ease their responsibilities that ye have failed to do. Ye failed to look after families all across the country. You had an eviction ban uh, and you did nothing. No emergency measures were taken at any stage. And so the people then that were issued 117 notices, like I said, in Tipperary, they face a cliff edge at the end of this week that ye are still are denying that there's even a problem. So in response to your recklessness, they've taken the approach that they have tomorrow, like I said, to call that emergency meeting. Now, no responsibility was taken by the government parties or in the independents who backed the government and even uh, Deputy Mary Butler has thrown what she told us last week into doubt. Now, Deputy Lowry and his colleagues in the regional uh, group who saw fit to prop you up last week, they haven't answered the question uh, of what happens to those whose eviction notices will fall at this weekend either. Now, we've heard repeat, and we've heard it again from you today, about turning corners and not making the same mistakes. Let me give you some numbers. And you don't, you don't give them when you're praising yourselves when you stand up for the Taoiseach. 2012, 3,808 people were homeless. 2015, 6,032. 2018, 9,891. 2022, 11,754. 3,431 of them are children, Minister. Last year, 95 homeless people died under your watch. So you talk about solutions. That's not solutions. It's failed policies by you and Fine Gael governments down through the years. And do you want to know the common denominator and all that? 
it's been a fall for Gael again. It's not Sinn Féin, it's not Labour, it's not Social Democrats or anybody at this side of the House. It's you over that side of the House that has caused that damage. And we need deputies to act in the interest of all these families. <coughs> we need backbenchers of the three Deputy. parties and independents to actually get a backbone for a change and reject the government amendment that's coming and to force with Sinn Féin on this bill and not put more people out of their homes and into homelessness. Thank you very or much, Margaret Deputy Patrick, please. Thank you very much, Cahirlach. First of all, I want to thank my own colleague, Deputy Owen O'Brien, for bringing forward this piece of legislation. And seven years and one week ago, exactly, was the time I gave my very first speech in the Dáil ever and it was on the housing crisis. So when I was preparing for tonight, I felt I probably could have just dusted off that speech, except things have gotten an awful lot worse. And in that seven years, and you might be very interested in this minister, Sinn Féin, and in particular our housing spokesperson, have introduced countless pieces of legislation, countless motions, policy papers, and every year in our alternative budget, Deputy Owen O'Brien, as our housing spokesperson since 2016, puts forward our visions for housing. So they're all there, uh, easily accessible for you to look at. Um, so it seems to me that under your watch, um, yourself and the senior minister, government fiddles while Rome burns. And your so-called solutions aren't meeting the minimum needed to catch up on decades of underinvestment. In the last week or two, we have heard yourself and all of your colleagues talk uh, you know, ad nauseum about the tenant in situ scheme. So just to point out for my own constituency, Carlo has approval to purchase 10 properties under the tenant in situ scheme, and Kilkenny has approval to purchase 25 properties. That's the information the local authority has as, as of date. That's, that's what they have to date. That's the information that they're going on. And also, in relation to I, go I, to the local I authority... Ask, please, genuinely, the speakers not be interrupted while they're speaking, because then we can all have a... Thank you, Cahirlach. Thank you, Cahirlach. Um, in relation to uh, go to the local authority for everything, is there any chance the local authorities are going to be given the correct staff and the, the increase in staff that they need, because they're totally overburdened as it is? And it is... I can't actually describe describe how frustrating it is that seven years later we're not only in the same housing crisis but it has gotten far, far worse. And it seems like a very obvious observation to make, but housing um, affects all aspects of your life. And I say this this evening, an obvious point, because I genuinely don't think the government truly understands this. I know government TDs have been out this week and last saying they aren't immune to the plight of people whose families are at the cold face of the housing crisis. But really, I think it's more a case that many government TDs, including in my own constituency, are speaking out of both sides of their mouths. Housing affects people looking for employment. Many now are reassessing whether to take a job, irrespective of whether it's the right job for them. It's, can I afford accommodation? Can I even find accommodation? near that job. It's, we've seen this in the nursing sector, we've seen it in the education sector, and we've seen scores of young people, and not so young, leaving uh, abroad and emigration again. People are choosing college and university based on availability and cost of accommodation. They're not uh, based on where they'd like to study or if this is the right course for them. We have 11 properties to rent today in Carlow and 16 in Kilkenny. Sorry, I'm over time. Sorry, I'm Apologies. conscious of your colleagues. Yep. Deputy Good. Minister, the tallest that was on the local paper in Cork today speaking about the eviction ban. Was he offering advice to the 500 households that are facing eviction next week? No, he was attacking Sinn Féin for making political issue out of the eviction ban ending and out of the housing crisis. No, I can tell you I'm not playing political politics. I have a single mother. And after Easter, she doesn't know where her child will be going to school because she doesn't know where she's going to be living. I have a family who have one son doing his college exams and another son doing his leaving cert, and they haven't even told their children yet because they don't want to bring the stress and worry of them and dare to be out on the 15th of April. Can you imagine trying to do your leaving cert and being homeless? And many families are facing that. The families who are logging on to DAFT today. i just give you an idea. There are 39 properties on DAFT. There are 500 households facing eviction in Cork. Now, I don't know how good you are at maths, but 500 doesn't go to 39, no matter what way you term it. Before, people are shocked, Minister. They're shocked at what you're doing. They can't believe it. They can't believe how cruel and the lack of empathy that's coming out of this government. People are facing evictions at the weekend. Like, have you any concept of how the stress, the pressure, the devastation that's going to cause people? Now, ye accuse us of playing, using this as a political football. 
Is that the only thing your spin doctors and your bathroom uh, consultants can tell you? Wouldn't it be more line for them spin doctors and those uh, highly paid advisors to be helping the minister to deliver homes? Like 11,554 and 3,431 of them were children. Minister, I have a direct question for you now. Two questions, actually. Where are they to go next week? You, and the other question, Minister. At what, how many people must become homeless before you admit you're wrong, resign and call a general election? Must it be 4,000 children? Must it be 5,000 children? I'm how many children must become homeless colleague, before you admit you're wrong? must have his time as well. Thank you, Deputy. Deputy Honour Brent, please, to conclude. Thank you, Chair. Minister, at the very centre of this legislation is a simple fact. In three days' time, because of the decisions of your government, very, very many people, adults and children, will lose the rental properties that they've been living. And you have put in place no credible plan to ensure that those people have somewhere safe to go. And I've listened very carefully both to the minister and to yourself, and I just want to respond to each of the claims that you're making. The Taoiseach today said people will be able to get another rental property. For seven years straight, the private rental sector has shrunk. We're losing about 7,000 private rental sector properties every single year under your government. So it's simply not the case that people can go and find another rental property. In fact, one of the most dishonest things the Taoiseach said is that there were thousands of new rental tenancies registered last year. We have a thing called annual registration. Every tenancy has to be re-registered annually, and the Taoiseach knows that. We also then heard that people could present for emergency accommodation, and we are talking uh, to directors of housing and homeless services across the state, and they're telling us that even with the additional capacity you put in over the cold weather initiative, that is at breaking point and very soon will be full. It may even be full before we get into April. We're told we have a, a, a target of 1,300 tenant in situ. It's not even 1,500, and the scheme is working. But unless you actually change the rules underpinning that scheme, as we heard in the Oireachtas Housing Committee only a week ago from the City and County Managers Association of the Department, you're not going to meet those targets. I hope you do. I hope you exceed them. But given that the Minister hasn't met a single one of his social and affordable housing targets to date, I won't hold my breath on this. We're told the tenants can have the first refusal to purchase the homes. Please. Look at the income of the vast majority of private renters. They couldn't afford to buy the home. It was made available to them. And the legislation underpinning this scheme isn't in place yet. You misspoke during your speech to suggest that that would be in place in April uh, as well uh, as the administrative scheme for cost rental. That's not what the minister said earlier. The legislation isn't even drafted. And then you talked about the cost rental option being in place on an administrative basis uh, from the end of this week. Well, the approved housing bodies haven't been talked to. They don't know how that scheme is going to work, nor do local authorities, nor do tenants. And given the fact that it took a year to get tenant in situ for social housing, even beginning to see any purchases, I suspect something similar will happen with this. Now, you said a really interesting thing, uh, uh, Minister. You said, and I quote, it's the public out there becoming homeless. You kind of got that wrong. It's the public out there that you and your colleagues are making homeless by lifting this key protection. And over and over again, we have said this is not the core issue. The emergency ban on evictions is only to give you breathing space. And contrary to what you've said, both last October and three weeks ago, I set out in very detailed memo form to your senior minister the actions that we needed to take during an extended ban on evictions to reduce the pressure of singles and families going into emergency accommodation, to get people out of emergency accommodation more quickly, to increase and accelerate the delivery of social and affordable homes, and to use the emergency procurement and planning powers that you have in your fingertips, that you are refusing to use to combine with vacants and derelicts and new building technologies to generate an additional volume of social and affordable homes above the existing targets to get people out of homelessness. Things you could have done over the past five months that you have refused to do and you're not going to do at the time ahead. Uh, the, the other thing that just beggars belief is that minister after minister comes in and tells us the plan is working, the plan is working. And yet, not just over the last five or six months, 
over the last two and a half years of this government and seven years of Fianna Fáil and Fine Gael in government together, what are the facts? House prices at record highs and continuing to rise. Rents at record highs and continuing to rise. The private rental sector contracting, homelessness increasing, and you're not meeting your social and affordable housing targets, targets that are too low to begin with. So what do we need? We need this crucial protection to be passed. We need the Labour Party's no confidence motion in your government to pass tomorrow. And we need a general election because we cannot keep going on decade after decade of failed Fianna Fáil and Fine Gael housing policies, failed Fianna Fáil and Fine Gael housing ministers, and ordinary working people having to live with the very real consequences of your decisions. Because anybody watching at this debate today, all they have heard from you is you're going to make them homeless from this Friday, this Saturday, this Sunday. Shame on you. This bill is crucial. This bill should be passed, and I commend it to the House.